Wagner with a snap, and that's good. That's Corey Wagner. First blood demons. Arms walk through. Still some life in the demons. Inside Melbourne, episode four, with thanks to Zurich. Here with Jack Viney, co-captain of the footy club. G'day, Jack. G'day, Clint. How are you this morning? I'm going pretty well. Good. Lil Mithin returned. She's back with a glowing tan from the beaches of Noosa. Hey, Lil. Apologies for my uh, absence last weekend, but I'm back and I'm ready. Good morning. It's a lot of apologising this year already, isn't it, Jack? I know. Jack? Rocky start to the <laughs> podcast the first couple of weeks. And we welcome our special guest, um, James Harms is here. Harmsy, how are you? G'day guys, thanks for having me. I've heard a lot of good things about this, so very excited. <laughs> so hey, it looks like you uh, set your alarm early to get up for this. I don't know about the time slot, I'm pretty uh, pretty tired. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we'll see how we go. What was the comment that he made? You, you reckon you're not, you're not a tradie, not so a tradie you shouldn't be up this early. 7 a.m. <laughs> Don't know train until 8.30, so... Well, that's the dedication you show to the cause, Harmsy. Well done. Yeah, the bird gets the worm. I like your style. Hey, um, Jack, let's have a chat about um, Lil's teammates because um, they celebrated what was um, a really great season uh, on Saturday night. Lil, um, you scooped a little award as well, but I guess it was um, all about Paxi, Karen Paxman. Yeah, she's an absolute jet. She's, um, I'm pretty sure it's her first um, Best and Fairest Award. Days has taken out the last two, but yeah, really deserving winner of the um, AFLW Best and Fairest. And she's now a three-time Australian player and she's an absolute champion. So we loved having her at the club and she um, just did a little, we'll see you next year too. So it's nice to know that she's recommitted to the club and she'll be back next year. So really deserving award winner. And um, Lozzie P came second, our ruck, um, really dominant season. I don't know what, what it is about this footy club, but we've got excellent ruckman. And um, yeah, she plays really similar to Gorney in the way she follows up and gets around the ground. So yeah, really great night. and. Yeah, as you said, I picked up a little one myself, so never never go home angry when you've got a little trophy in your hand. <laughs> one for the mantelpiece. Good, good speech. Um, everyone said it went a lot longer than everyone else's, so <laughs> I don't know if that's a good or bad sign. It's a lot like well, Gorn. It couldn't have been as long as oh, Maxie Gorn's when he won long. the BNF last year. It was like he won an Oscar, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> we, should, we should actually bring in the music for yeah. next year, so yeah. how long was yours, Harmsy? Not long. Not I'm not uh, short and sweet on the mic. So <laughs> get out there and um, get it get it out pretty quick. We're going to get you to lift this morning because we've got some hard hitting questions for both you and Jack from the outer. Um, I want to dive into the result from last Friday night uh, because there'll be supporters that are trying to digest it, finding a way to digest it, and um, uh, you know they've certainly got more questions than answers. Um, what can we tell them right now, Jack? Um. <laughs> Oh, I mean, it, you know, it is what it is. Uh, obviously, disappointing start to, to the year and disappointing result uh, on Friday night. Um, there's no way around it. We're a little bit out of touch, a little bit out of form. But, I mean, yeah, we're, we're confident we can we can find our feet soon. Just keep keep moving forward, keep reviewing the game um, the same way we've been reviewing it. Win, uh, you know, it doesn't matter whether we win or lose. We look at uh, the areas of the game that we, we need to improve in um, and the areas of the game that we, we, we did a right in. And uh, at the moment, there's there's more areas that we need to improve in. And uh, that's just that's just where we're at. So it's going to take take us all as individuals to kind of reflect on um, what we're doing, what we're giving to the team, how we're functioning as a team and, yeah, try and improve. Harmsy, um, do you feel the same way? I mean, it, it feels as though a couple of steps forward, maybe one step back every now and then. Um, how do you digest it? Yeah, as Jack said, um, not the ideal start to the year, but uh, we're pretty confident that we've got, you know, the right people in place and um, we can get, you know, the job done. So, um, you know, we'll move on. We'll review it, as Jack said, but move on. Um, just try and stay positive and, uh, you know, get back to work and hopefully this week we can get on the board. Yeah, hopefully we do get back on the board. How do we beat Sydney? What's the plan there? And, you know, we keep talking about this improvement, but is there anything specifically that we need to do really quickly to to keep winning? And Yeah, I think I think probably the main area I reckon we've identified is the defensive stuff. So, um, you know, from last week, uh, last week to this week, we felt like, um, you know, offensively we're able to, 
a couple of things we put in place worked better and that's why we're able to score but I mean when you let allow a team to um, score 130 points from 50 something entries um, you know you're gonna have to do a whole, whole lot more scoring than that so I think the defensive side of the game is the area that we feel like we've got our biggest upside and we need the improvement quickly um, so that's kind of the focus um, coming into this week it's that's not specifically um, designed for Sydney we haven't we haven't just delved into into them just yet um, we'll have opposition review today but yeah the first half of the week's all been about our performance on the weekend when Gus um, said post match that you know we all needed to buy into defense what was he what was he talking about how's he uh, probably uh, geez it's hard one to explain over the podcast but um, we're just not functioning as a team defensively um, at the moment we're pretty one on one and uh, you know it's hard for the backs to take aggressive position if the mids aren't getting back to support and um, if the forwards aren't doing their job so um, you know ev- everyone needs to work together in defence it's not a one on one kind of style that we play so um you know, once everyone starts buying in and we start defending well, we'll start playing a lot better football. And, you know, it's probably our biggest weakness at the moment, but we can turn into our biggest strength like we did at the end of last year. Um, you know, it will be pretty hard to stop. What, what do you make of the criticism? Because there has been a bit of um, external noise about the fact that we look slow. Um, do you subscribe to that, that we, that we look uh, slow, Jack? No, nah, not one bit. <laughs> I just don't buy into it. <laughs> I mean, there's it's something a constant that that keeps coming. Oh, I up. think I think that's a uh, you know we can we can look at it and die and try and dissect it as much as we want, mm. but that's as far from the root of the uh, root of the issue. Um, that uh, we we got plenty of you know once once our systems start start functioning i promise your boys will start looking a lot quicker um so we, we can yeah we, we can try and nitpick and um do all that kind of stuff but yeah there's there's much bigger issues and and once and once we we, we fix those bigger issues you know all that stuff will go away in a heartbeat how do you we spoke about it last week in regards to reach round and indeed you and the guys made a pretty emphatic message running through that that banner uh just a few days ago but how do you block out the negativity because there is a lot swirling right now i mean you had a former club champion a bloke that you know very very well in gary Lyon, who lined you up and gave you a fair kick up the backside um what do you do i use i I didn't even know i know what gary's said or done not you personally yeah 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 i mean personally i I just don't look at it um Mm. you know i watch a, a podcast with um, Kevin Hart on Joe Rogan with Joe mm. Rogan and he, he speaks about this very well and articula- articulates it much better than I can um, but I mean it's just it's not gonna it's not gonna make you better yeah. um, it's not gonna uh, it's not gonna do anything but make you feel worse about yourself and, and put you in a negative headspace so why why buy into it um, you know the lure of of, uh, of social media is real and everyone's kind of looking to uh, buy into it and, and see what's out there but at the end of the day particularly in, in our position as um, high profile people people just want to get on there and be negative and it, it affects you mentally so I just try and stay away from it and mm. I mean I'm not really jumping on social media too much these days yeah and no, I guess really similar in the women's cup there's just a whole lot of negativity around the whole competition itself but you saw the impact that someone like Taylor Harris could have with one image and it was on national news for a week and, and went internationally uh, sorry went globally so it was um yeah I guess there's lots of things you can and can't do when it comes to it but I think Jack's message is absolutely spot on I reckon yeah watch that Kevin Hart the Joe Rogan podcast it's like at the start of it he, he explains it really well I thought it was yeah, it really resonated with me um, Harmsy, how do we drag it back? Because it's zero three, it it starts to look a little grim right now. How do we um how do we drag things back? Um, I guess we've got to stick to our guns and um you know support each other and back each other in. And as Jack said before, there's probably a few boys that are out of form. And um you know once we start finding our feet, I think once we win one, we'll start getting on a bit of a roll. So um 
stick together and train hard, work hard during the week and um, probably a few minor tweaks in our defence and, um, you know, go out this weekend and get back to playing how we play and um, I think we'll go a long way to getting the win. Yeah, I think, I think like the, there's a lot of, you know, you guys are three and uh, zip and three mm. and it's almost like, oh, the season's almost over. Like, but... You know, as a uh, you know, every year there is teams in this position who end up working it out and being far worse um, score uh, position than we are at currently. So I don't see any reason to to lose hope or to really start thinking negatively about the season at this point. There's still Nine games. yeah majority of the season to be played and um, a lot of upside to be had. So. If we stay positive and, and keep trying to improve and get better, um, like the season still op- potentially could be anything. Um, that's how we got to look at it, I think. And when you walk into the um, the room with Goody post match or post Friday night, um, what positives could he draw from? I mean, obviously that second quarter, uh, things looked as though they mm. started to click. Yeah, there was a there was a period there where we almost seemed to find our feet again. And then we just it just went away after after half time. Uh, I think the the few things to um, take out of the game were, uh, you know, the offensively using our numbers a little bit better and, and scoring off the back of, of entry. So I think we scored over 100 points. Um, so from that that point of view, that was a that was a focus having 70 something inside 50s a week before and not making most of it. Um, so we, we we did make more of that those opportunities. But like I said at the start of the podcast, um, you know, when you're letting a team score 130 points from um, 50-something entries, you've got to score a whole lot more to, you know, mm. to win games. So that's that's the defensive element that needs improvement. Harmsy, um, earlier you spoke to just about sticking together and supporting one another. And then, Jack, it was really nice to know that you were speaking of positivity and things like that. Is the feeling amongst the group still genuine and there is excitement and belief in the group because I know that is a really bad feeling when you are zipping three and things don't quite go your way, but the boys are still really attack the season head on. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's obviously going to be some boys a little bit down, um, you know, there's form and um, not winning games, but as a group, we love to stay positive and come in every day. And, you know, as Jack said before, we, we still review the game the same way if we win or lose. So. Um, you know, we've got a process there and we'll go through it this week. We'll do our review and we'll move on. And um, like I said, we've got to stick together. Uh, it's been a bit of a tough start, but, you know, anything's possible. And as, as I said, I think once we get that one win and a few boys get a bit more confidence back and um, start getting our mojo going, I think, yeah, we'll be a really good side again. Let's pick things up. Um, because it's a huge match again um, on Thursday night against the Swans at the SCG. Um, the surface looks an absolute treat, which is good news. Um, Jack, uh, interstate trips, they're good galvanising, um, you know, opportunities effectively. Not that you need galvanising, but just they can really lift spirits. Yeah, I suppose you got, you know, the the football club going over all together to to do a mission you know so you, you know you all jump on that plane with the same um same goal in mind and you spend a lot you know you spend a lot of time together obviously staying in the same hotel so you have t- uh, you know team dinner team breakfast um so yeah once uh you know if you can pull them off they're bloody great trips um and, pre- and provide great opportunities will have you seen the scg have it's I the seen state it? the state of it I did know there was trouble with the oh my death, goodness. but I haven't recently. So you were joking. Huh? You were joking. It looks you... terrible. Oh, does it? Yeah. <laughs> 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 the, the surfers is just, uh, they had a, um, an A-League match there um, on Saturday night, and it's um, just absolutely filthy, so hopefully they so get... How long stops? Exactly. <laughs> I would have thought so at oh. this stage. Hopefully they get, uh, they get that in order. But um, do you relish uh, the trip? To play the Swans, uh, they're coming off a um, off a win, Harmsy. Yeah, I've actually never played up there, so it'll be good to get up there and um, you know just see Sydney as well. Um, but uh, I love interstate trips. Um, 
love the feeds. Uh, <laughs> get a big buffet at the hotel. So what's he yeah. saying? He, he says it's a, uh, it's it's a, a buffet, buffet, not a stuffet. Stuffet, so. <laughs> um, yeah, Common mistake on interstate trips, isn't it? Boys it go is. too Boys heavy on the buffet. They get a bit heavy for the game, but um, yeah, I'll, it's just exciting to get. We're going to get back out there and t- you know get another chance to put our brand on show and. Um, you know, we're being challenged by the coaches with our defence and it'll be great to get up there and, you know, defend really well and come out if, with a win. You are playing well though, Harms. You've had a pretty good start to the year, kick three on the weekend. Um, I guess the plan is probably to do something pretty similar this weekend. Yeah, I guess probably a lot, a lot of the other boys in the team, um, more our def- my defensive stuff that's probably let us down a little bit. So, um, you know, that's what makes me a, pretty, a, a good player is... Um, defending first and playing off in second. So um, hopefully I get another chance to go to someone this weekend and um, try and shut them out of the game. And um, yeah, I was just lucky to kick a few on the weekend, kicked a couple late, so. Uh, they were a little bit cheeky, those yeah. girls. <laughs> Jack gave me on, which is good. So I'll Look try and retain this weekend. <laughs> We've got some great questions from the outer again, Harmsy. We're going to get to them after this short break. I just want to give you a taste of what's to come. Darren uh, writes, have you ever compared your chompers with those of Tony <laughs> Jones? <laughs> Tony Jones being a great friend and colleague well, actually, of mine. Um, I've done the Sunday footy show and I, he was on it and um, the boys made me made you call him chompers and he hated it so um, <laughs> I think mine are better to be honest <laughs> confidence what do you uh, well, yeah they're, they're, they're right <laughs> they're up there I'll give you the tip <laughs> uh, I reckon yours might be real though so that's probably what makes yeah. it uh, a little bit a little bit different um, thanks for that guys um, and Lil let's um, get stuck into um, questions from the outer after this short break on Inside Melbourne with thanks to Zurich Thanks to our co-major partner and podcast sponsor, Zurich. For over 100 years, they've been insuring the people and things you truly love. And just like you, they truly love footy and truly love Melbourne. Welcome back to Inside Melbourne. Thanks to Zurich. Uh, We're here with uh, special guest, James Harms, and we're about to fire some questions from the outer. We'll start with, not the outer, my personal question, the nut, the nickname, the nut. Where is it? Where is this origins? That's a great question, Jack. Um, it was actually from Jeremy Howe uh, in my first year. I used to call him Howe Nut for some reason. Um, he started calling Don't know me, why? Nah, just <laughs> random. Um, he started calling me Harms Nut and then the boys just started calling me the Nut. Um, and I knew it took off when Ruzi called me the Nut for the first time. So um, I don't mind it, to be honest with you. It's stuck. Yeah, it's stuck. it's stuck. So, yeah, I'll take it. So, Ruzi really sort of got things going. Is that is he is he one of the ones that you can thank for it in terms of building momentum? For the name? Or? Yeah, no, yeah. When, when he got up there and well, called you nut, you knew yeah, that. Yeah, I think it, so. I knew that was when it was. It you was made it. It made it. <laughs> it made it as a name. So, um, yeah, it was, a, it was a good day. Hey, we've got some uh, great questions here, guys. Anything, uh, anything stand out there, Lil? Oh, just looking. If there's a lot about tattoos, can you give us where is where are they all come from? What are they? Do they mean anything, or just got them because? Uh, yeah, they go? I've got a few that mean something. Um, on my chest, I've got one. Pretty much all my family's, like my siblings, mum and dad, their name, um, and then one on my knee, um, one on my shin. Sorry for my godmother, um, Aaron, and then just the rest of them. Are just because I like tattoos and kind of got addicted and once you get one, you can't stop, so. There's another one here. Do you think by the time you retire, you will have more as many tattoos as Dane Swan did? I don't think so. I'm pretty <laughs> sure his body's fully covered, so. Um, might Maybe finish my right arm off and then that'll do for now. Have you seen like those inverse tats where they like black it out and then they go white? No, I haven't seen in that. The, in the black part? You I've seen like the black out parts. I've never seen white in it. No, yeah, no. they like black it out no and way. they go over it. Nah, I'm happy with mine now. Yeah, right. Are you planning on doing that, I can't go through uh, the pain I again. I wouldn't... I really like tattoos. I think they're pretty cool. I don't have the balls to get one. <laughs> <laughs> You've always told me... You oh, yeah, one. Mean, yeah. we, always, we always talk about tats and what his upcoming project is. Yeah. And I'm thinking maybe one day down the track I'll get one, but <laughs> I've got to build up the courage first. Come it's on, you expensive. scared of needles. <laughs> a bit painful <laughs> as well. <laughs> It'd taint the image, surely. 
Yeah. I was thinking about potentially a face tap. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, going to go his beard. Like, you need, like, a physical characteristic to, like, portray your band. Like, Gorney's got the, the, the beard, you know, Tats have been done before. Like what hasn't been done? I'm like face tat. You're not a rapper, <laughs> Jack. No, but <laughs> no one has a face tat. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So I'll stand there. Um, I've been yeah, thinking about it. I reckon you look great. Uh, I reckon you should do it. <laughs> what do you reckon? Like a teardrop or like? Yeah. Just across instead across? of yeah. All right. <laughs> Just a little less low key. Would not like that. Um. Tell us about um, growing up. Your favourite football player, um, Lazi M25, asks from your childhood. Um, my favourite player for probably Melbourne would have been Brock McLean or Travis Johnson. Mm-hmm. Um, and growing up, was that the question? As in like growing yeah. up, who I like to watch? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, probably those two boys and um, love to watch David Neitz as well and um, even probably you know, as I got a bit older, watched a bit of Nathan Jones. Because you were your Melbourne fan growing up. Yeah, so Melbourne fan. And, um, so yeah. Any memorable matches you used to come to the G and watch? Any any um, any times that you just relished being out there in the red and blue? I remember coming to the G when um, Jeff White kicked the goal oh, yeah. to against put us the dogs. The was it? Yeah, against the dogs. So um, that's probably one that stands out for me. High fives all around in the stands. Absolutely. Very good. Will? One of our favourite Stuxies asked us, what's it like having your brother play for the Casey Demons? Yeah, my little brother Jack's down at uh, Casey this year. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool to have him there. Um, hopefully I don't get to play with him. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's good effort to him. Um, you know, he's only 18 years old and um, he's pretty raw, but um, Jade's backed him in and... Um, chucked him on the list so yeah it'd be great to see him get a game down there and um, you know try and develop his football he's, he's, he's young how old is he he's a young yeah, boy he's 18 yeah so he's a good so he's, I reckon he's bigger than you like, <laughs> he looks a bit physically stronger and is he uh, taller than you he's not taller than me Jack oh. he's a, I think he's about your height, so uh, what's that, 175? <laughs> yeah, so bigger than you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Elena Hodgetts says, you seem like a pretty, uh, such an upbeat, happy guy pretty much all the time. No, always smiling. How do you find dealing with disappointment of the team, not performing? As big, do you find it hard to maintain your positive attitude with so much negativity? Yeah, geez, that's a good question. It's a um, bit deeper. Yeah, it is A bit deep. of a deeper level. Yeah, I am obviously... Um, I've got the big teeth, so it's hard to hide the smile. Um, yeah, I guess it's sometimes when you come in and um, the mood's a little bit down, you've, you've got to, that's when you've got to really stay positive. Uh, you know, it's easy to be happy when, you know, things are going your way, but when, you know, the team's not playing the best football, um, that's when other boys will be down. So, I don't know, you just got to find a little bit and um, you know what it's like coming in, Jack, it's pretty positive anyway to come in here. So, um, you know, as long as you, you're waking up pretty healthy and, and fit every day, I'm, you know, that, that makes me pretty happy. Hamzi, how's the, um, how's the hand? Because um, I know that you, you had the surgery, obviously, um, right on the edge of the season. Um, yeah. How, how have you gone sort of recovering from that and you're back to, you know, 100% fitness, I guess? Yeah, the finger's actually not too bad. Um, doesn't look great, as mm. you can see, but, uh, yeah, I'm back 100% fitness, uh, obviously a little bit of a hiccup, missed a little bit of training before round one, which wasn't ideal, but yeah, I'm starting to feel a lot fitter and run out games a lot more. So um, yeah, definitely back to full fitness. Good stuff. Matisse, I'm going with all the real easy ones. Matisse Sully's wondering what your pre-game Spotify list consists of. Are you a music pre-game kind of guy? I'm into J. Cole and uh, Travis Scott, that kind of stuff at the moment. You would be. Yeah, yeah. Jack, you like that as well, don't you? Yep. So um, we have to hand our phones in when we get in there now because of the AFL rules. So I don't have an iPod or anything, so I just have to listen to his like, playlist. How do you listen to music these days without an iPhone? Yeah. yeah. A few What's of the, the girls bring um, iPod Nanos, the little... Did they still make those? Yeah, you can buy <laughs> them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's how we do it. That. So, yeah, it's a bit annoying, but they're, they're my two, two favourite artists at the moment. Yeah, great. I haven't heard of either of them. 
Are you surprised? <laughs> not at all. Not at all, Clint. Brett Hitchcock asks, when are they building a statue of you down at Casey? <laughs> <laughs> I think Mans told me the other day they just got a big fun, so maybe they'll chuck the, the arm <laughs> statue in there. But no, nah, I don't think they'll the, be building one down there. The nut time, wing so. or something? Yeah, I told him to name the new pavilion after me, but I don't think that'll happen either. So <laughs> I don't think I'll be getting a statue. <laughs> Um, Harriet uh, W asks, do you feel more comfortable in the midfield or pushing forward every so often? Uh, yeah, definitely playing midfield. Uh, it's where I was drafted as, so um, I guess it comes naturally to me f to find the ball. And as I said before, um, last year was probably my best year and that was coming off the back of, you know, playing on the opposition's best player and then um, trying to find the ball myself. So I definitely think... I love playing midfield and that's where I want to be. A few dangers out there uh, for the Swannies. Um, who do you think you'll you'll get at the at, on Thursday night? Honestly, I'm not too sure. Um, last year I got in a bit of trouble because I told the media that who I was going to oh, <laughs> <laughs> before, um, Goody before wasn't Goody um, <laughs> had even told the team. So uh, there's a few players in... There you go, throw a few <laughs> yeah. in. Yeah. Oh, you'd have to look at Kennedy... Yeah. Um, Parker, yeah. even Heaney, so um, won't tell you too much, Clint. <laughs> <laughs> Kieran Egan has asked, what is the best moment and then the hardest moment of your career so far? Um, whew, the best moment was probably, I think that win we had against West Coast over there last year to cement us in the finals. Um, just the feeling after the game was, you know, so so much joy in the rooms and um, yeah, everyone was so happy and um, and grateful for the opportunity that we, you know, get our chance to play in the finals for the first time. And then probably the toughest moment was, uh, you know, midway through my first year, I sat down with Toddy Viney and um, Mans and. Um, they pretty much said to me that if I didn't change the way I was, you know, going about my day-to-day -day life, uh, I probably wouldn't be on the AFL list. So um, when I was, you know, 18, I was pretty immature and um, pretty much just an 18-year-old kid out of school. And just Jack, as Jack would know, I was, you know, I wasn't, I didn't really know that I was doing anything wrong, but I was, you know, I wasn't doing the right things around the club. Um, so that was probably the toughest part of my career. Um, you know, I had to really fight for my spot and, yeah, pretty proud of it. Hey, I want to change tax a little bit. Um, Sylvia asks, why do you call Angus Roy? <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> um, it was actually after the loss last year against West Coast. Um, we're having a few beers, Gus and I, and we started talking about cricket. Um, and Andrew Simmons, Roy, obviously, um, me and Gus actually messaged him on Insta. <laughs> <laughs> oh, After no. a few years, and oh, no. um, he got back to Gus, and ever since then, Gus, Gus has gone by Roy, and um, it's just a silly little thing that we oh, do. No. What, what does he call you? He calls me um, Dizzy Gillespie, <laughs> <laughs> which I don't know why, because I couldn't bowl cricket. I, I used to play cricket, and I couldn't even bowl offies. So, um, but yeah, it's just a bit of fun that we have, and. Um, it's kind of, it's kind of the group's kind of um, caught on to it as well. Yeah. A few boys have started calling it, so um, gets the boys up and about a little bit as well. I'm sure um, Andrew Simons would have been rapped when he saw a <laughs> message from you two idiots in his yeah. uh, in his inbox. <laughs> yeah, it was probably about two a.m. as well. When he sent it, so um, made it even better. Any more gems for uh, Harmsy? Even. Even questions you've got uh, yourself, Jack. Give us a little dig, dig a bit of dirt for us. Oh, I just got got some positive reinforcement here for you. Oh yeah, Melissa O'Brien. We've <laughs> been through how do you stay positive and block out the negativity. We've answered that, but she says I think you're an amazing player. Smiley face. Oh. So you got some got some love out there, mate. <laughs> Thanks, Melissa. Is it a smile? It. Is it a smiley face with big teeth or not? <laughs> The yes. <laughs> um, well, that's terrific. Some great questions there from the outer um, with thanks to Zurich. Um, Harmsy, thanks so much uh, for your time on the podcast. Um, just again, reinforce um, for the supporters that will be listening 
obviously the importance we speak about the importance of of getting the four points we need to start banking them but um you know the boys are going to go up there with um all guns blazing with a positive mentality no doubt yeah absolutely we're going to go up there and um we'll give it our all and you know as i said we'll review the game this week but uh, we'll move on pretty quickly it's a short turnaround so get out there and hopefully get back to having a bit of fun and um the supporters can you know see that that hard brutal football that we play and um you know some smiles on our faces out there and um you know looking like a real team again so um thanks again for having me on and um just next time can you make it a little bit later so i can have a sleep <laughs> <laughs> i think we might leave it there jack yeah, good, that's a good wrap up <laughs> <laughs> will um great tan thanks so much for uh for being with us this morning yeah no it's good to be here i'll be back next week don't worry good stuff uh, from the inside melbourne team it's goodbye